Good evening, and welcome to the May 7th, 2014 Board of Education meeting. We had been in executive session discussion personnel matters regarding individual employee status uh, at starting at six o'clock. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, do we have any participation in government students here this evening? Okay. Um, the requirement is that you uh, stay to 9 o'clock. If the meeting goes that long, we'll take a break, and then you can come up and sign out. And if you have any sheets for the board members to sign, we can do that. If it gets done before 9, you'll be lucky. So, and be able to leave at that point. Uh, introductions? Lynn Lenhart. Joanne Cunningham. Kate Navarro. Jody Monroe. Tom Douglas. Matt Downey. Michael Cooper. Diane Spiever. Charmaine Budisinger. And Judy Kehoe. Okay. Um, approval of the minutes of the April 22nd, 2014 regular board meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? I yep. um, just Sorry. a correction. Um, I, I lost the tape to make sure this was uh, accurate. I think on the minutes it talked about me objecting to classes being run at uh, fewer than 17 students. And I believe um, on the tape it said, uh, I understood that there was a board uh, guideline and understood that classes could be run below 17. But what I was objecting to for the record was classes that were run significantly below the 17, at, at 9 and 10 and not necessarily just below 17. Okay. Does that make sense, Brittany? Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, amendments to the meeting? Okay. All in favor of the minutes uh, as amended? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, next is the Student Senate report. Do we have a representative from the Student Senate here? Great. Hi, sorry. Um, so I'm really sorry about the past couple meetings. Um, there's been a lot of miscommunications and um, just wanted to apologize for that. Um, but. Right now in Student Senate, we're working on getting a TV in the um, student, uh, the upperclassmen section of the cafeteria. And that would be for like news, sporting events, um, to try to, make, try to make it more of a, like a funner area for the upperclassmen. Um, right now, we're looking at a 60 inch, um, and um, it's gonna be donated by Student Senate. So that's one thing we're looking at. Another is um, the upcoming dodgeball tournament um, for the spring, so always a a lot of fun. Um, and then the other thing we're discussing is um, some furniture um, that we might be able to put in in different areas of the school. We're working with um, Mr. Arnes and Mr. Landry. And um, we're meeting with them um, tomorrow afternoon, again, to kind of further discuss um, what kind of furniture we might want to put in, as well as um, the possibility of putting in um, one of the, like a kind of like a conference room where students would be able to um, kind of work on uh, group projects together um, with, in a more secluded area. Great, thank you. Thank Anyone you. have any questions for her? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next agenda item is our uh, superintendent's report. Thank you, President Downey. I've given so many over the past couple weeks as we end the, the budget season. Uh, I just want to make this one report. Uh, there's many uh, obvious activities that are going on as we uh, come to this time, and I don't mean to draw any less light uh, to those by not mentioning them, so I hope my fellow board members will also help me out in that. Uh, but in the interest of time, we uh, have been discussing Chinese over the past uh, two, two meetings, and also internally in administration, we've been addressing that uh, even prior to that. One of the things is I think it was on April 30th, we did have a parent meeting uh, in regards to the current discussion the board has been having in regards to uh, the Chinese program in general and the staffing uh, needs going forward uh, in the current, current year and coming year uh, as we've had um, to address enrollment issues and so forth. One of the things that I can say is through um, our communications is we do not have a demand uh, issue. We know we have students that would 
preferably like to take the program, as well as I know if we had a very viable, strong program that has not had any staffing issues over the past seven years, we would probably have students uh, readily interested in those fields. However, we do have a supply demand in regards to uh, qualified, certified staffing that meet the requirements of not only the state, but also the United States government uh, and Department of Homeland Security and Integration. So those are some of the issues. We did talk to the parents about that. We heard many of their concerns uh, and thoughts on the program and what they would like and whether or not we can or cannot meet some of their needs and some of the past perceived promises that have been out there uh, prior to my arrival as well as what the board discussed two years ago during the same type of discussion on Chinese during my first year here. As a result of that, uh, my administrative team and I, Dr. Bell, uh, we've been looking at it and working as, as we've been charged by the board as quickly as possible to try to address the situation if we can and make any uh, comments or recommendations to the board, which we've done over the past uh, two board meetings. With the last meeting, we made our recommendations known that we f feel that a phase out for us is at this point the most reasonable educationally sound decision when it comes to looking at the program and providing the best options without all these other factors interfering. However, that doesn't necessarily sit with everyone else because it's not that we're advocating a phase out, it's just that we have numerous issues that we have to address. One of the things that we are looking at is we are trying to overcome any of the staffing needs and we will need up until July 15th because we've calculated that that would be pretty much the most reasonable point that we must have a decision on which course of action students would have to take throughout our program. So we would tell the board that we would continue very vehemently searching Hill and Dale for a prospective candidate for the program at a full-time nature. Now, one of the issues is, is that a question is, is how do we address that full-time nature? Because we don't wish to make promises to incoming fifth to sixth graders if we cannot deliver. We cannot enroll unless we know we will be able to deliver because we feel that that would be an undue service to other parents and put them in a state of hiatus at this point. But if we look for a full-time person, we would have to make that decision on whether or not we'd open it up to considerable sixth grade uh, enrollment at that time if we were successful with any staffing uh, needs being filled. If we are, then obviously our ninth and 10th grade would have a teacher and our seventh current students going into seventh and eighth grade would also have a teacher and we would be able to continue on with the program. But I would say with any, without any promises, we would try to do our best. And if by chance we are able to uh, meet the staffing needs, we must recommend a fallback plan of online assessment or distance learning if we were to lose any instructional staff mid-year because the time to recruit would not be of an immediate nature. So that would be one of the things we would tell you is a concern uh, as well as a possible course of action if we're successful. One of the other things is that if we weren't able to secure our staffing needs by July 15th of this year, we already have told you our plan for the ninth and 10th grade students for the 2014-15 school year will that be that they will finish the program up to level three in an online or distance learning program. Although it is not the best avenue, it is an avenue that would allow them to uh, phase out of the program with the intent of getting that advanced regents diploma. The real issue comes with those students that are going to enter seventh and eighth grade. Therefore, with that, our recommendation still stands that if we are unable to secure staff, the appropriate level of staffing uh, with a certified New York teacher approved by the Department of Homeland Security or unnecessary for that approval, that students at that time would need to enroll in French or Spanish. We do have an additional option, although both Ms. Monroe and myself do not believe it's a viable, successful option for students of the middle level. However, we heard it from the parents that they would prefer that option if possible so that they could make that, even though it's against our better judgments, uh, we would say that there is a potential Middlebury uh, option for online learning, but there are potential high risks in that, and once the choice is made, 
that is the choice. So those are where we are at. Uh, Ms. Monroe, do you have anything that I missed or anything that we've discussed previously that we are willing to do and trying to do and exhausting all of our efforts as we always have even before this issue came to light? So that's my report back to you. In the interest of time, I'll let you ponder that. You can ask any questions that you want at any of your due times, and both Ms. Monroe and myself are here to respond to those questions for you. Anyone have any questions for Tom at this time? Just in, in the case of um, Spanish and French in middle school, um, is there a lot of, uh, I mean, I recall visiting my children's classes many years ago, and it seemed like there was a lot of participation um, in the class, you know, during every class period. And I was just wondering whether it's really educationally sound at the middle school level to have online <coughs> learning where, the, you know, you really wouldn't have that. Uh, my personal opinion is I would not recommend middle school students take an online class. I don't think that they're, um, you know, it's a different style of learning. It's a lot more autonomous. Um, it's very, it, they're acquiring the language at that point, so to take a class like that online at that age, I don't think is um, a great avenue for learning, especially a language. Um, so it wouldn't be my recommendation that middle school students go into an online program for exactly the reason. There's a lot of interaction. Um, you know, on, on most of the online programs are not interactive in the way that our classes are. And I think at that age, to expect a middle school student to be able to um, participate in a program like that is probably not the best learning for them. Thanks. Would you be able to secure online courses for the number of years the students, those students would need in order to get an advanced regents diploma? Right, right now, the only, the, there's only one option I found that um, would provide probably three years for middle school students, so set online. So for example, if you're a seventh grade student, that would only get you through ninth grade, not through 10th grade. So we would have to continue to look at another option for that 10th grade. So it would meet the regents requirement, but not the advanced regents requirement. And if parents so chose at this point, since it's still an uncertainty, would we allow them to opt out if they chose to do that to, to French or Spanish at this now, time? Now, sure. Some parents have already contacted Dr. Bell or the guidance counselors about changing at this point. One, one of the interesting things that from the parent conference, parent discussions is the question about whether or not the students have uh, wasted or lost the two years. So we've uh, presented, I don't, I don't believe they've ever wasted or lost anything when it comes to education, but one of the ways to help solidify that is the students currently in the program would also be eligible to take the proficiency exam and then acquire at least one unit of high school uh, credit at this point with where they have because there's a seat requirement and then also passing, I think, the low A um, test that is offered in the district. So that would be beneficial to the students as well. Um, I'm very glad that we're going to try to address the staffing issues, but I have severe concerns about offering an online option to the middle school students. Uh, I just don't think it's sound educationally for that age level. Uh, so I would be opposed to offering that option. I actually have a question. Does the yeah. board have the, the, the prerogative to take that option off, to directly to take that option off the table if we have a discussion about it? The board always has the prerogative to say we will not provide a certain option. It is my, my option to do what the board wishes. Because I share, um, you know, given Ms. Monroe's direction and Dr. Douglas's and Lynn's comments and Mike's, I, I also share, it's not, I don't believe it's a, I'm, I'm not an educator at that level, but I've heard enough of your concerns to believe that an online course would not be appropriate in that in that subject for those students. Um, um, I'm glad that we are committing to kind of sorting out the, the staffing issue and I understand July 15th as a, as a date to sort of kind of figure out what the game plan is. Um, I think that's a good move. I also think it kind of shows 
um, you know, sort of one last effort to kind of, you know, shore this up and kind of figure out how we um, how we can uh, move ahead. Um, I guess I would say, you know, there's a difference between um, sort of online classes and distance learning. Um, and distance learning actually is much more interactive, um, you know, involving kind of a video conference technology and so forth, or even kind of webinar technology. Um, there's lots of different types of um, kind of teaching modules that you can use. Um, you know, I just, and we're not there yet, and I appreciate that we're going to, we may have to make that decision. I mean, I think you guys know I'm an optimist, and I'm hopeful that the sorting out of the staffing um, occurs because there's clearly been um, sort of a lot of good discussion through the letters folks have written to the board, and I appreciate that. I think, um, you know, it again shows that our community really cares about the quality of education in Bethlehem and is committed to um, making you know, their views known and, and fighting for things they care about. And quite honestly, I think that matters. And I, um, what I keep thinking about in my head are those kids who got up and spoke at a couple of meetings, you know, back to back Wednesdays. And um, you know, that really was a meaningful um, exchange. So I appreciate that, um, that there's gonna be some new renewed or ongoing renewed effort there. Um, and I guess, you know, I, I do think that online, um, you know, modules where it's just you and a screen is a little, you know, it might be a little tough um, and kind of superficial for a seventh, eighth grader to handle, um, you know. But there may be other options that are m more interactive, I guess is my point, that we may um, use this time to also kind of dig a little deeper in. Well, with distance learning, the only, um, that might be a viable option for high school, but not for middle school. Okay. At least in the areas we've explored. You mean as far as what availability yeah, of avail the instructors? Acro across New York right. State, there are very little middle school distance learning. It's no, I get that, but center. across the country, there's probably more in distance yeah. learning. You can be anywhere in the world the on a screen. The problem is, is we must meet New York State guidelines. Right, okay. So we can't go anywhere in the world. But it's, it's possible, it's but right. we, yeah. we have not been able to find anything like okay. that for middle school. Well, again, didn't you say a couple weeks ago that even at that, our students are so much more advanced in the, you know, with what they'd find with the distance learning because they've already done all that? Right, that's the tricky part with, you know, having students in a program, even online distance learning, is trying to match that up so there's some alignment with what they've already learned where they need to go and be prepared to take that um, out, exit outcome, you know, for the advanced region. So we need to make sure that they're not too far advanced or, or it's too far ahead of them either. I think online learning should be an option for the middle schoolers. It's not ideal by any means, but um, I would be against mandating it, but I think having it as an option for the parents and the students who obviously have thought about this. The kids are in a terrible predicament. Um, all, all or nothing just doesn't seem right to me. I, I think we do owe it to give them some option um, to, to finish up the program um, and leave it up to them. I, I've been on the board for three years and it's the first time somebody's been passionate about something academic. <laughs> that that has come up to here, which is the only reason I wanted to do the board was for the academics. And so to shut down a program that's academic and so people are so passionate about, you, you take your lumps, I mean, you do. And I understand contractual agreements and things, but when you start out a program, you don't expect it to be successful in the first couple of years. You know, obviously I'm private, I'm not school based, but we take our hits when we do no new things and it can take five, six years to turn around. And, you know, we put, this is kids, this isn't, you know, us, I can take my lumps for it, but um, I think we owe them something, you know, if the parents, agree that this is absolutely not an option, that's maybe different, but I, I think we owe them something while we look to secure staffing, definitely. I, I think one of the safe things that we need to make very clear is if that is an option that the board wishes to pursue and provide, that 
once a student is in that program, it becomes more difficult to switch Which, yeah. as they go mm -hmm. through. And the parents need to fully understand that that is their choice. And at that point, it is what it is. Would a kid have the ability to double up on language? Within, in within their school? schedule, within I think it would school. be very yeah. difficult. No. Because as a practical thing, I think I would want my kid to continue as Chinese, but would also back, up. back it up yeah. with something else so that the advanced regions and other things, whether it was, you know, Latin, whether it was Spanish, whether it was French, would always be a backup, you know, as a possibility if they didn't do music, if they didn't, do, you know, do something else. Um, you know, if it were my kid, which this is not affecting, but that's what I would be probably recommending to my kid to do. I would agree that with Kate that I think if, if we are able to offer an option to the middle schoolers that are currently enrolled in it, if they can pursue it, I, I, I'd be in favor of that. Again, the parents have to fully understand that an online course is a lot different and that students are going to have to be dedicated to it and it's going to be new. I mean, it's not currently offered anywhere in the, in the school district right now, but if the parents and the students are willing to make the commitment, I think we need to offer them that commitment. I'm kind of torn in between both because I just feel like at the middle school level to just put a student in front of the computer and not have that interaction in the regular classroom setting you know I just I mean we strive for excellence and I'm not sure how they're going to get excellence by one-on-one -on -one with a monitor so I would be a little weary of that um, I too am glad that we are looking for staffing issues and that would be the best case scenario to let the students finish out, but. It, Jody, I think, do some of the online courses though have an instructor at the other end that they would interact the ones potentially? ones we're looking at would have a, a teacher, a certified right. teacher. Yeah. In with them or? No, in the video. Well, no, in right, the video. they, they could ask questions. they're the ones who develop the curriculum, monitor the program, assign the grades. Yeah. You know, there is a teacher um, uh, through the online program, some of them. Uh, make contact with the student, you know, through a phone call in advance. The correspondence is, you know, typically via email or something on on a whatever platform they're using. Um, but it's not, you know, a, a daily interaction with a, you know, a like they're going into a class at this period and there's, a, you know, you have to turn in your assignment at certain times. So who? So if there's a certified teacher on the other end, mm -hmm. who has to be in the room with the students? Does a certified teacher have to be in with the students, or can it be someone who's not certified but can speak Mandarin Chinese? Right. We would look to, if there's a certified teacher with the program, we would look to have someone who can speak Mandarin. But they, the person, available to the the person that would be with us would not have to be certified, Correct. and they could do the online, so they could... Correct. That's... They would be working under another teacher right. I mean they would essentially just be there to support to support, support. and guide but they can also right. kind of almost do we a little would, we would try to build the best possible program and option well with a little more flexibility yeah that's not that, that's, that's not a terrible option at all though no I mean, you know, you kind of get the listen, best kids are very used to looking at screens and learning things from them. Right. Um, you know, I have a third grader who's constantly on 25 math facts sites and um, is doing really well. And they're not all just very two-dimensional kinds right. of sites. I mean, a lot of them, are, you know, are a little more involved. And, you know, I, I don't know if I'd call them interactive, but some of them, you know, have kind of characters pop up and, you know, the biggest challenge with the middle school is particularly that seventh grade because I haven't found one that would right. give them enough to get to the advanced regions level. But if, but if you point. had that, because that's a certified program, we wouldn't have to have the certified teacher. It could be someone who has a master's in, in right. the Chinese, like somebody who can speak Student. Chinese. And, okay. How would the costs work though? Well, would have to pay for the enrollment on the online plus the staff right. person. Correct. Does that come out? Right. It's more cost. Sure, it's more costly for sure. I just think options are good and I kind of, you know, Kate's comments of the growing pains of a program, 
you know, that resonates. You know, a lot of times it takes a lot of fortitude and, you know, sometimes you have a big dip and it doesn't work out and you sort of dust yourself off and, you know, I, I mean, you know, people are fighting for, for a, a, a course and a curriculum here and, you know, that's meaningful. You know, I think it's worth our time to at least kind of, you know, pull out all the stops and think as creatively as we can to maybe work through the growing pains and, you know, and figure it out. I, oh, I don't see the growing pains, to be honest with you. I, I go with the supply and demand idea, um, as you had mentioned, uh, in, in terms of uh, staffing issues. Um, so I see it from a different lens. Uh, I'm more comfortable with an online option if there's a non-certified Chinese Mandarin speaking teacher there. However, um, I would like to know that that's in place by July. Right, that, yeah. that's because not because it's not just any program. Either. It has to meet <laughs> to the clear. standards of this school district. So it's not just like okay, we've got online, and I, I'm not saying implying that people were saying that, but it's not just it's an online option. Okay, it's an option. We don't care what it is. It's an option, and therefore people can sign up for it. It had. I would want a report by July 15th, or I'm not sure when we meet in July if we meet at all. First Tuesday, in July the seventh, we meet. Okay, so in our July meeting, said we are we are confident that we have constructed or identified or pieced together a, a online option that could be applied for middle schoolers that meets our standards. If you don't have that by July, then I think we should revisit the discussion. And that's of course if you haven't found this, you know the, the staffing issue hasn't been resolved. And, and kind of just tapping into what Kate was saying of doubling up, is there an option of an after-school type program? For the Chinese or the online Chinese, where they can at least be enrolled in the Spanish and French and kind of have a double, just throwing After out there. After school, you mean? Yeah, I'm just throwing out there. There's not enough from the schedule to double up, would, but at least they could. No, my please, initial no, thoughts was that will pose a major contractual problem. Okay. Because but, that's an instructional course that is to be offered during the instruction. But I do know of groups of parents yep. whose kids are enrolled in Chinese who said, we will do it ourselves, and they're getting together in groups, and almost not like homeschooling, but in the evenings, so they, they plan to have groups of kids study Chinese online in the evenings on their own. Um, the, only, so, the only drawback is they cannot, it does not apply to their transcript. Their that's correct. Yes. But the kids want to continue the language, and so they yeah. will. I'm not sure if we quite have a consensus here to I'm trying to if, if I can, guidance. can I summarize real quick? I yeah, think? but how, why couldn't it be part of the transcript? Don't people sometimes bring in outside credits at, at all? By another certified New York State public school or okay. charter school or, yes. Okay. But we, we don't take okay. credits from parents home study. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, if, I can, if I can just try to summarize, we're going to be reviewing our staffing needs up until July 15th. If we are successful with addressing our staffing needs, we would make sure that each of the, right now, seven, eight, nine, and 10th grade classes would be taught by the instructional capacity. We would have to then look and see whether or not we would consider opening it up during the year to the incoming sixth grade. However, they've already made selections, but that would be a dis discussion you'd have to have. Uh, if that's the option, that's probably the best option, and then we'd have to go through that as a full-time uh, individual. If, however, we are unable to resolve any staffing needs on July 5th or July 15th, the 9th and 10th grade would be contacted by the department, uh, Dr. Bell, to start the enrollment process through ninth and 10th grade for either online or distance learning programming so that they could complete through the level three. For seven incoming seventh graders and incoming eighth graders next year, we would consider still offering the possibility of an online Chinese middle level program. However, that is something we'd cautious every, caution everybody about but we would research that and try to get it so that we have, as well as our other online, somebody that's there to help provide some uh, 
constructive feedback and tactile uh, processing through it. At the middle level, or we will also offer that they could choose Spanish either in seventh grade and eighth grade and within one year be back on track to a full regents and advanced regents level program. Um, is that pretty much it, I think? Yeah. That. And that if, by any chance, as another piece, if a staff uh, needs are taken care of and at any time during the preceding years that we are in a staffing situation within the middle of the year, we automatically proceed to either one of the options at ninth and 10th, which is already prescribed, and at 7th and 8th, then it converts to Spanish, French, or the online option. But once the choice is made, it's complete. So we have all the prescription of what would happen in a if, then, or that, what. Sorry. <laughs> Can I just comment or double check on one piece of that? That the online option would be available to middle school parents only if the board has approved it at the previous meeting. I thought we were going to look at that. Weren't you supposed to come back with an online product product that we decide, we, we, okay, this is a, we, we, said, we have not found one program yet. We're still reviewing them. Right, but, but by July 15th, whenever the, the board meeting preceding July 15th. Yeah, yeah. we have We would have to send out notices before that because the board meeting is at the beginning of July. I think we have one at the end of July. No, Don't we need one? August August text, July and August, right? and I believe it's the July 1st. First 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 and we have to have one later in July to approve the tax warrants. Okay. Right. August. Well, no, the in August. August. August, I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm looking for the board to approve the online option. That Whatever you option that we have yes. available. Before you make it yeah. available. And I'm not sure how the, I, but I thought that's what we were talking yeah. about before, is that you come up with it and say, okay, this is, this is a Bethlehem, meets the Bethlehem standards, this is what we recommend, this is the online option, or we don't have it and then the board decides before you make that option available to parents. If we have to bring that back to the board in August, we would really need to have parents uh, have sort of a selection early just in case it's not approved so we, that we know what to do. Or well, we, I, I, think we're asking, I think if we're asking, the board is asking administration to be looking into the online program and a way to staff it right. that we better make that decision, decision now right. before we make them go through all the work and then decide right. that we're not going to do it. Right, we do Do you think they're going to bring to us a non-quality Well, they, may be able to come, they might come back and say, we can't do it. We, well, well, that's what I mean, and then we don't, that's and then the if that's the answer. Okay. Yeah. Just right. that starting like July 15th, the 17th or something, we really need to get parents right. the information so that they can appropriately plan for the coming of the school year, right. and as well as the middle school, as well as anyone at the high school, we're going to need 30 to 45 days to get them registered. Right, there's always a special meeting. Right, right. because I, I don't believe the expectation would be that they'd come back with an online program and the board would say no. Right. So it's I think we have to give them guidance that we, we support an online program. I think program. you definitely have four that would be okay with the, when I was kind of tallying up, that would be okay with that. And I don't think they would come back with something that's not good. I think, if I can, Dr. You know I mean? if, if we came back with anything online, we're going to need somebody in that room, especially from our vantage point, especially with middle school students mm -hmm. that has a stronger grasp. I mean, it does allow us flexibility on potential right. people that we could consider for that, uh, as long as we have the teacher on the other component of the online. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 would, I would, I think I'd be safe in saying, Sort of like what Ms. Stevers is saying, we want to bring you something that we don't believe would at least be able to work. I will preface that we can't guarantee to the level we're trying to, but it, it's still a riskier program than if you were in one of our classes every single day. That's right, but the board wouldn't approve the. We are, we're not going to walk through the actual. No. No, that's not so our job. role right. to do. Right. But, yeah. the no, but they would, would come back and say, yeah, they would come it. back and we say, got we got it. it. We got yeah. it. And, and we're doing it. It's our standards. Yeah. And, 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 and we're good to go. And, yeah. and if they, and right, good if to they go. do that, the board would 
And again, it, it may be a different board at that time, but right. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's definitely be, one different board member, so it, it'll be a different board in July. I'll channel. Um, so I think we need to give guidance now that if, there, right. if the administration is able to come up with a plan to address the uh, transition of the middle schoolers, that we should support that. Yep. Yes, they come up with a plan. I, agree. Yeah. I thought that you needed, in, in whether it's distance learning or online learning, you needed a certified teacher in the in the room. You, in, in New York State, you need a certified teacher to be the teacher in charge of the course or the teacher in but supervision. But the online course could be from another state, so you would. Assume. But if a student took a course, like, let's say Florida. And they transferred here, and they took that course. We would grant them credit. Yeah. That's an interstate Same. agreement. However, say a student in Schenectady and a student in Bethlehem, but the teachers in Schenectady on distance learning, we can have an uh, an assistant literally in that cl that classroom. We are not required to have okay. a teacher in both. It would be better, but we're not required. To. Okay. Better to have somebody who's. But there must be a teacher, so, official teacher of record. Yeah. So that argues for kind of a wider scope of distance learning, like an actual distance learning module where you have an actual teacher on a screen. As long as you have a certified teacher in the room with the students. You don't need a certified, certified teacher. Or not certified. 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 As long as you have someone in the room with the students, you can have someone from, you know, the San Francisco middle school on If the they're screen. willing to enroll the students. That's the problem. Most of, you have to understand with Florida Virtual, they are actually enrolling the student. No, I, so I they're understand. Being, well, they're being enrolled here, and they're being enrolled here. In distance learning, the student does not enroll in San Diego. They are enrolled in Bethlehem, and we are getting the service from another uh, right. another school. In New York State, it must be a New York State certified teacher. So. Teachers in California, if they don't have the reciprocity or certified in New York State, it doesn't matter where they teach. They but can't. But Florida offer works because there's reciprocity. They're enrolling in the state of Florida, and then we're using it as a transfer credit. Okay, it's, so as long it's as there's a loophole. <laughs> so if there's an agreement with another state. No, that's Just not certification. Of, right, well, the online program. The difference. If we have students who move from one state to another, if as long as it's an equivalent course, right, and we get, for example, U.S. history or Spanish or something, we look at what that curriculum is, and then right. we can align it and say yes, this would grant credit. Sometimes not all their credits transfer, and some don't. So they might have to make up some courses if okay. they transfer here. So we would look to whatever program it is. Distance learning is challenging because uh, not many schools offer it, obviously, and also scheduling becomes a huge issue with distance learning. Um, it, when it's offered, has to be when they offer it is when they offer it. So right. we would look at with whatever program, whether it was high school or middle school, to make sure that we would be able. There'd be no problems with granting. So you credit have to look at the State. curriculum sure. of the class. Absolutely. But other and than make that, sure that we can grant credit. Okay. For that so if class. you found a private school somewhere that had this blockbuster Chinese program and Bethlehem looked at their curriculum and said, wow, this is a great course, perfectly matched for what we want, um, and they're okay with us kind of subcontracting on a screen with a teacher, um, as long as would it There's matter? A, there has to be there has to be, be there, there'd have to be a certified teacher attached to the course okay, so on one end. On one end, okay. Yes. And then on the other end, if if it were projected into our classroom, we need a, some sort of yeah, instructor right. Right. in the room. Right. Okay. There's all kinds of little loopholes that we'll try to exploit anything that we can. Right. I have one more question. You said for. The, seventh graders there would be only enough so far you found modules to take them to just the regions of program so I think that should be unless you find something else yeah. that should be spelled out clearly for parents right. Right. see like it, it, if what Jody was saying like a three-year program would take them to ninth grade well that tenth grade component or our, our top level might have to be considered Florida virtual school we just don't know but we would have to find something that would logically connect to each program I think there's consensus to, to 
can move forward with oh, that up. Hopefully I've represented some of the thoughts of the parents to the best of, the, of our abilities, but we are also, uh, a, as many people said, we have been doing this for over seven years. I haven't, but three years. I know Jody has been seven. Dr. Bell, I believe, has been seven. We are not trying to give up on anything, but we are also trying to be practical in making sure that we try to address what we have right now and then hope for the future. That's all we can do at this point. That concludes my report tonight because it went on long enough and we have two other presentations plus the budget hearing. So. Okay. <laughs> Next is the uh, Board of Education report. <clears throat> uh, anyone want to offer anything up? I just wanted to remind the community that the Meet the Candidates night was last night and the video is available, I believe, online through the district and it will probably be shown many times on public access. If I may check, Brittany, really? was that loaded yeah. today or? Yeah, it was set out. I had, I had, I it just takes SNL. forever to load. There was load, the mess so Yeah, it was on. <laughs> Good. You really don't need to look at it. Thank you. I was going to say it was riveting, so <laughs> don't miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch it? <laughs> yes. She yes. loved it. Yeah, 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 we loved it. I have something. I just want to say today was bike to school day at Hamagrill Elementary um, and we had um, the Bethlehem Highway Superintendent there. We had <laughs> we had Dave Kay was on his bike. We had Officer Whiteley. We had lots of parents, lots of kids. Um, it was just a great kind of bike safety, um, you know, exercise, physical fitness kind of celebration. Um, and lots of fun. So great job to the PTA at Hamagrell for pulling it together. Yes. Like Dr. Douglas, there's a lot of events going on. Attended a bunch, enjoyed them all, encouraged the community to attend the many that will be coming in the last uh, month or so, six weeks of school. Um, I was pleased to see an SNN go out about uh, traffic safety in the high school lot. Um, because I um, do drop off here occasionally and I do drop off sometimes in the middle school and just encourage the community to um, use basic traffic sense in driving. Um, there is a two-lane exit out of the middle school, not a three-lane. Um, you shouldn't be discharging your kids onto Kenwood. I mean, I've really seen some outrageous mm -hmm. things that really compromise the safety of kids um, uh, in, in, at both schools. I haven't been at the elementary schools lately, so please to exercise caution um, for everyone's safety. And I would also add that, especially Ellesmere, uh, I drive into Albany every day and you know slow down to the speed limit and cars are whizzing by me. It's unbelievable how you know with the big signs and the you know the little crossing guards there and I, I think there had been an accident a, a year or so ago with one of them being hit. So I would you know remind the community to please slow down when you're near the school. Uh, you know over here by Eagle there's a 20 mile speed limit and uh, it may feel like you're crawling but it's for the safety of the students and and staff. So and one other thing was. Uh, uh, last Saturday, the Glenmont Elementary had their Lollapalooza at Swifties. It, it's always uh, great to see the local, you know, um, owned community, you know, the businesses providing back to uh, our schools and whatnot. And I always appreciate that. I know Diane's business always uh, donates and whatnot too. So. Okay. Uh, um, yes. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. You're <laughs> you should go first. People. No, I know. Um, this is just one thing. Um, I attended a meeting in Syracuse. Um, we call it the mix, but it was Municipal Innovation Exchange Summit. And this um, is created in response to the governor's property tax um, cap measures. And going out a couple of years, we're, we're going to be involved more in sharing services. Not that we haven't tried to do so in the past, as we've, you know, been doing our cuts, we're looking for other ways of saving money, but uh, this is more of an organized approach. And um, meeting with people that groups of people that we in the education sector have not really formal, formally met with. So we had the Association of Towns, the Association of Counties, and the Conference of Mayors uh, represented there. And it really was a very worthwhile discussion. I think they all appreciated for some reason. You know there have been silos, and um, but this is something that you know we probably really need to work together on to find savings. So this is the first one, and I think there'll be others around the state too, to you know try and have this discussion going, in anticipation of having to come up with plans for saving money. I mean we're fortunate 
with the town over the years that you know we've always had um, a you know, pretty good relationship and but in other places that is not true and so I, th I think this is a great effort to do so thank you anyone else Next up is our presentations. Uh, the first item is our budget hearing. Um, I don't know if I, I know I need to formally make some statements at the end. That's at the end, it says, but at the end. But. You got it, Judy, or you want? I'll get it for you in a second. <laughs> Tonight we are going to give you a quick recap on all that we've done on the budget over the last few weeks so that you have an idea of what is included in the final budget that was adopted by the board and that will be the subject of the vote on May 20th. And tonight we are also required to hold a formal public hearing as part of our process on the budget so that will follow after we've done this brief overview. Our total revenues in the adopted budget was $92.6 million. That included a tax levy that was below the calculated maximum amount per the tax cap formula. That would have yielded 3.12%, and we are below that at 2.99%. The state aid number did increase based on the restoration of state aid that came to the district following the adoption of the state budget. So where we were initially looking at a budget to budget decrease we are in fact now slightly ahead um, compared to the prior year so that is helpful um, the fund balance we have dropped that from the 1 million 750 that has been in the budgets over the last few years down to 1.4 million so that is in keeping with our longer term fiscal plan where we lower our degree of reliance on using that fund balance <coughs> If you look at the trending for both our levy increase in the far right column and then looking at our budget change, our 10-year average is 4.58% uh, for the levy. Um, the more recent four-year average is down to 3.2%, so we're pleased that the budget is in fact even lower than both of these numbers at 299 for the 14-15 year budget. Uh, similarly, on the expenditure side, where we were looking at 502 over 10 years, um, under 1% for the last four years. Um, to be at 2.45% is um, a relatively modest increase given the cost pressures that we've talked about over the course of the budget review. This slide just gives you a quick recap on the state aid numbers. Um, when we had the um, restoration per the governor's adopted budget. We got a bump up in our foundation aid, and similarly, we had a reduction in our gap elimination adjustment, still a, a pretty sizable reduction at $3.1 million, but at least it's moving in the right direction for us. On the expenditure side, um, also at $92.6 million, the uh, majority of our budget, of course, is in our salaries and our benefits, but I think the 2.63% increase that you see in the salaries reflects the work that has been done over the last few years um, with the control of staffing levels and also with the settlement of all of our collective bargaining agreements. Um, that percentage increase is considerably lower than what we've had in prior years as well. Um, also moderation on our fringe benefit costs. Um, we did have a decrease this year in the employee's retirement system percentage, uh, a slight increase in the teacher's retirement, and we had a, a single digit increase in our health insurance. So that is helping to keep that number a little bit lower. Um, the BOCI services look like they're significantly higher. Um, part of that are increases in pricing, but it also reflects a swapping um, where we had been contracting out for some services we are now using BOCES for that. So that's why there's a relatively small increase under equipment supplies and contractual, and the increase is reflected within the BOCES. Within that 300,000 for transfers and capital outlay, that does include $100,000 once again for the capital outlay program. Um, we started doing that in this current year, and we are continuing that. Um, that also results in a bump up in our state aid um, based on that program. 
Uh, fringe benefits, um, again, the majority of our budget is made up of the $11 million for our health insurance and dental insurance as per contractual requirements. Um, the second largest component are the TRS and ERS. Again, those are our teachers and our employees' retirement systems. And then the others are mandatory benefits, your FICA and Medicare, et cetera, at $23.5 million. Quick recap of the trending on those rates. Um, I had mentioned that it was a much lower increase in the TRS, up to about 17.53%, and then a slight decrease in the ERS down to 20.1%. So I'm uh, hoping that we've hit the, the peak on those rates and that we'll start to see those come down um, a little bit more in the coming years. The capital outlay, as I mentioned, um, this year we're working on phase one, which is the replacement of the structural supports in the high school pool. We have more work to be done on that, so um, phase two for next year will include the ceiling and the soffit improvements, as well as replacing some of the equipment. So um, by incorporating this within the budget, we really maximize the amount of revenue. And in fact, um, one of the agenda items that you'll see later on tonight is to award the bid for this phase one work, which we do need to complete by the end of this school year. Wanted to give you a quick summary of the changes in our program and staffing amounts. We did have certain additions to the programming as listed on this slide. Uh, most of them were on the instructional area um, with some um, RTI additions of 0.4 for elementary math and English at the middle school level. Um, we have a 0.6 increase in technology. Of course, as uh, our students are using technology more and more, we were looking for some uh, technolo technological reinforcements. Um, that's part of that $33,000 line. Um, and we also included $25,000 to partially restore field trip allocations. Those had sort of been on a bit of a hiatus over the last few years, so that is also provided for within this budget. Um, there were some staffing reductions included within the budget, also as listed on here. Um, most were um, slight reductions in the sectioning. Um, we did have, um, due to enrollment um, reductions, the ability to scale back two FTE in the elementary classrooms, and then also one FTE on the social worker um, for special ed and student services, just under $404,000. Because we had not done any significant equipment additions over the last few years, um, this year we did include um, increases of 251,000, um, 125 for a, a short list of items in O&M, another 100,000 for the online testing equipment and technology, and then the um, snow clearing device for transportation to help clearing snow off of the buses. Our fund balance um, is still projected to be in a healthy range. We're keeping the undesignated unrestricted components at 3.72% um, based on current projections. The uh, use in the subsequent budget, that's that 1.4 million that we've been generally or gradually reducing down. Um, the mandatory reserve is new. That is associated with the um, potential and pending sale on 90 atoms and then um, a slight increase in the ERS reserve as well. During our public hearing and wrap up on the budget, we always like to include the updated multi-year forecast for the budget so that you get a sense of where we're going in the future. Um, on our revenue side, um, we've in presumed that there is a modest increase in state aid each year at about 2% per year in those out years. On the um, expense side, we have assumed based on the contracts in place and fringe benefits as a percentage of those salary increases that that trending would incur or occur. You can see the takeaway from this is that the gap where we are currently at $3.2 million in the proposed budget, that is gradually dwindling down and that means that the rate of our revenue growth would be higher than the rate in our expenditures, so we're gradually closing that. If we assume that we use a 3% levy increase each year, you can see that would generate the majority of the funds that would help close that gap. And then, similar to what we've talked about this year, you have a combination of tools to help you close that gap. So whatever the levy increase is, you also have the tool to draw down somewhat on your fund balance, and then we would continue to look at whatever program changes we need to do 
Ms. Keo, for the audience and for the camera, we have been doing this each year, and this is our long range financial plan for the district from the administration and your office, correct? We always have a long range plan. And this plan. also takes into effect <laughs> potential raises or increases that are projected over those Absolutely. years. Absolutely, and even if we did not have contracts in place, we would make assumptions on what we thought would be the case. We can't really make decisions in this current time period without knowing what's coming down the road for us. So this is all part of our planning. Um, we recognize that there are certainly many, many variables. Who can predict some of the changes that have been thrown at us in the last few years relative to the state aid? The magnitude of the gap elimination adjustment, the um, relatively minuscule whittling back of that amount. These are all of the unknowns that we just deal with. We know what tools we have, we project it, and then we update our projections as facts and circumstances change. This is also something that the rating agencies look at when they're evaluating. We still are a good credit when we go out to the municipal bond market, and that is because of budgets that are realistic reflections of where we will land with our actual fiscal results and the fact that we have policies in place um, that govern how we manage our finances and that we are using projections, long-term projections as a tool. Thank you. You're welcome. Do those revenue numbers include uh, the gap elimination adjustment? Yeah, I'm assuming that our total state aid would increase 2% per year, okay. which I'm hoping is a conservative number. I mean, certainly if we were to so get gave, a if, higher if we, restoration on the state aid yeah, number, yeah. your gap would be lower. Right. And, right. and what this plan shows also is if all of a sudden the state says, we're just going to do away with the gap, not give you the money and say it's no longer there, which I think I've said a couple times will probably happen. Uh, as you can see, in, in the out year in 1718, a 3% levy roughly raises about $2 million. We're almost having to, at one point or another, if we are forced to have to cover that, we're either going to have to make reductions or almost double our levy over the next three years one time to finally make that issue go away. Our hope is that we can slowly, gradually wean off and take a little bit of that gap away each year as quickly as possible. Can I ask a question? Um, when you showed that slide on the, um, the TRS and the ERS trending stuff, so those are, those are pretty significant um, increases each year. I mean, they're double digit. I know. Oh, what, that's a result of the recession. That's all. It's okay. Done. So, what drives those increases is really the Wall Street. Wall Street. just just yeah. the economy. So, when you do your projections, what do you assume going forward with respect to those increases? I take our fringe benefits as a percentage of total payroll, uh -huh. recognizing that our big variables are going to be either the pension rates right. or health insurance. So over historical review or the way that we're, we've been doing this, it's been pretty consistent. So even though you might have a slightly higher increase in your pension rates, you might have a lower increase in your health insurance um, to offset that. So it's an average, it's an estimation. The, the, the current trend to also answer your question is the TRS and ERS rates have been projected over the past 20 years. They're, for many years, they were very low, and districts were reaping the rewards right. of them. It is suggested that you find the trending rate, which is about 12 to 12 and a half percent, and if districts would have stayed that, at that level and put money away versus when they had to draw from it, right. that would have helped it. Right now, we're above that. Right now, in the coming year, I think we have maybe one more year that it will be on the high side, but the trend already in the ERS is heading down, which each of them follow each other pretty specifically, hoping that there's no other issue on Wall Street because we're tied to it. We should see an easing of both of those over okay. time. But easing means 12%? No, it's gone down to 0.1% over okay. the past 20 years. But, but we're not predicting that, that over the next yeah. 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 three or four years. Yeah. That was not part of my We don't see it doing yeah. that rather quickly. That would be a prayer budget, and I don't do those. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, okay. It's just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it's a significant number. But they also use a smoothing technique where they look at multiple yeah. years of trending. It's, so, it's a five-year trending, yeah. so that's why we're in the... We're in the fourth and fifth year of that five-year smoothing, so. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Um, quick recap for you. Um, we talked at the last meeting about um, the town's recent revaluation and what that means to the tax rates. Very simple concept is when the overall total assessed values go up, assuming no significant change in the levy, the tax rates go down. And that is what we're experiencing um, based on the estimates that we have currently where we actually had a rate of 21.60 cents per thousand dollars in the fall 2013 tax bills, the rate looks like it will drop down to about $20.83. Um, so if your assessment stayed the same or maybe only increased a little bit or if it went down, you're actually going to be paying less in your school taxes with the fall 2014 bills. And that doesn't happen every year. And we have our calculator. Uh, and we have a calculator on the district's web page. You can go in. We have samples of what you can look at. You can take a look at your fall 2013 tax bill. You pull off your taxable assessed values from there. You take your change notice and put in either your increase or your decrease, and then it will automatically calculate what your change will be based on these estimated rates. So. Um, August will be when we finally get the um, totals that we can use. They're, they're locked in at that point. Um, it'll be past the grievance period, and then we'll be able to give and you. And we would ask everybody to please remember this is only about the school portion, and these are estimates. We're giving you the best that we have with the numbers that have been provided. But we have strong confidence in our, our calculator at this point. Yes. Um, we noted that about 78% of the community is in that lightly blue shaded section of this um, pie chart. So that group has less than 10% or lower in terms of the increase in their assessment. So um, while there are some who will be significantly affected because of it, um, because they had a larger increase, the vast majority will benefit from less of an impact and if not a decrease from this reval. We also talked about what does the um, governor's two-year property tax freeze mean. Because the district is adopting a budget um, that will hopefully be supported by the community that does give us a tax levy that is below the maximum allowable, that should qualify people for their rebates. And um, the way that is going to be calculated by the commissioner of New York State is assuming you meet the star eligibility requirements. So you, it has to be your primary residence. You have to be earning um, less than $500,000 a year. Um, you would be able to get a rebate equal to your actual increase in taxes from last year to this year, or if more, 1.46 times your 2013 tax bill. And that 1.46%, if you recognize it, is the inflation factor that is part of the tax cap formula for the district. So we have a few examples on there. Um, first one is if you go up $100, that's more than the 1.46%. So your rebate would be 100. Um, in the second example, if your bill only went up $50, because the 1.46 is more, you would get the 1.46%. So um, most people should be seeing a refund of some amount yet to be determined by the state. And the tax estimate calculator, again, is a link on our webpage, pretty easy to use, color-coded and with instructions. On our ballot on the 20th, we will have our school budget. Um, for 92.6 million and um, a yes or no choice on to support or not. Um, we also will include the bus replacement proposition. We have eight large buses at a cost not to exceed 879,000. Um, that really represents a, a small portion of the overall total fleet that it has been recommended that we um, replace that amount on an annual basis in order to maximize that, that cost benefit between repairs versus um, our debt service. And then we have um, three seats open on the Board of Education, and we have four candidates. This lists the candidates in ballot order, uh, Matt Downey, Joanne Cunningham, Jonathan Fishbein, and Christine Beck. Um, their biographies and information is also available on the webpage and will be included in the budget highlights newsletter, which will be coming out shortly as well. Mailing tomorrow to meet the statutory requirements. Okay, see that's shortly, within 24 hours. Watch your mailbox. Okay. And now it's time for the public hearing portion of the budget. Okay, 
great. Um, does anyone on the board have any questions? Any further questions for Judy? Okay, great. Uh, tonight we are holding the public hearing on our proposed budget as required by law. The notice of the hearing was published in the spotlight and a copy of the proof of publication will be included with our official minutes. At this time I invite any members of the public to speak who wish to offer up comments either for or against on the proposed budget. I ask that you please come forward, state your name for the record prior to offering your remarks uh, as we are being recorded. Anyone in the public want to come forward? Yes? No? Okay. Um, seeing that no comments were offered, uh, do I have a motion in a second uh, to close the public hearing? Second. That's a first and a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. The meeting is closed. <laughs> Next up is our capital project timeline presentation by Greg Nolte. Um, I'm hoping to have the shortest topic tonight. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm here tonight with uh, Dan Ucraft uh, from Ashley McGraw, our district architect, and Scott Bullris uh, from Campus CMG, our construction manager. Um, I'm going to give you a very brief update of where we've been, where we're at, and where we are we're hoping to go. Um, SCD uh, took quite a bit longer than we expected to approve our project. We got out later to bid, uh, a little bit, um, actually quite a bit later than, than we anticipated, but uh, we received SCD approval of um, the project on April 11th, and between April 11th and April 23rd, we had a, a fever of uh, reading the documents um, uh, to be out to bid. <coughs> um, actually, today we had our first pre-bid conference uh, with uh, potential contractors. We had about 25 uh, attend. Um, we had uh, a number of questions. We actually split up into groups, into the prime groups of, of the contracts, and um, we actually toured a number of, of the schools and of the systems uh, that are part of the project. Um, we have another uh, pre-bid conference a week from now because um, sometimes contractors don't, they wait till the last minute. So um, I'm, we are expecting probably more people coming uh, next week as well to ask questions um, and, and to look at the project. Uh, we are still looking to receive bids, uh, public bids on May 21st. Um, we've heard through the grapevine that there are a number of projects in the capital region uh, that are bidding um, at the same time. Uh, we actually have had one school actually going to delay their bid uh, just so that they're not in conflict with ours. Um, from May 21st, um, again, we'll have a, a, a feverish effort on our part to review the submissions, uh, to look at all the alternates, and I think there's about 25 alternates or so, um, to see where we are with budget and basically uh, come up with uh, a recommendation to the board as far as uh, what should be approved, um, which uh, we're hoping to be before you on June 4th. Um, after that, we, we sign <coughs> contracts and we have our kickoff meeting with the contractors uh, June 11th and hopefully shovels in the ground by uh, the start of school, or I'm sorry, start of summer. Greg, <laughs> that's three months Greg, away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, is, are we bidding everything in the project now? Or yes. is it, it's not phased in, it's everything that's yep. part of the? Yeah. Right. Everything, some stuff, uh, some items, some technology items we'll, we'll be purchasing through state contract. But basically we have um, seven contracts uh, that will be bid all at once. So we'll have a good sense for total budget and where we stand. Um, I thought I'd just uh, touch upon the call them critical scope items, the items that we expect to be happening this summertime, just so everybody gets a, a sense uh, for the magnitude of what's going on in the district. Um, we've had a number of meetings with uh, involved and impacted parties regarding all of the athletic field work at the high school. Um, I'll show you a little phasing map um, uh, uh, on the next slide, but uh, there's quite a bit that's happening here. We're not allowing any use um, of our fields, um, and it's, it's, it's pretty massive. 
um, roofing replacements um, uh, here at the high school. Uh, we expect the contractor to start um, and, and uh, work through. Um, there's uh, reinforcing that has to happen in certain areas uh, to meet certain snow loads. Uh, this work will continue into the school year. Um, and um, uh, th that's something that we need to get on because the number of roofs are, are in, in, in rough shape. Um, abatement here at the high school, there's quite a bit here at the high school, quite a bit at all the schools, um, and we're going to be phasing that in over the, the next two summers, summer 2014 <coughs> and summer 2015. So this year here we're looking pretty much to do the lower floor of D-Wing. Um, we still have a number of summer programs that are happening here and we're working around and coordinating uh, um, uh, that schedule. Um, so. That work will be going on here, as well as the replacement uh, of, uh, of the flooring. Um, another big item that will go uh, into the school year is the replacement of the domestic water piping uh, that's above the ceilings pretty much throughout the school. So those are critical items. Um, the school will be uh, um, torn up uh, this summer and um, a lot of activity. Uh, this is the, um, the site map I was talking about. I'm just, I'll just touch upon it real quickly. Um, basically, uh, at, at fall time, hold on a second here, um, at the end of this um, school year, about mid-June, uh, uh, your, your stadium field comes out of commission, um, and it, pretty much after school uh, as well, the tennis courts, and we'll be uh, basically uh, starting um, regrading, uh, putting in irrigation, um, lights, uh, the tennis courts will be milled down, resurfaced. Um, all before the um, start of the school year. Um, that's the tennis courts. The fenced in field right here is, is getting some slit seating work. Um, that will be, uh, that field will be up and running by the start of the uh, um, school, uh, the next school year. Um, this other yellow area right here, uh, which has a number of uh, lacrosse fields and other practice fields, uh, that will be out of commission. Um, and similar to the stadium field for about three growing seasons and will be put back into commission fall of 2015. <laughs> and once those are back in commission, then we'll take out the other, the varsity softball field and, and do that work. So um, uh, we're hoping only to lose um, one football season on the stadium field. Yes, Jeremy. On the, the track, I was actually scoring a track meet this, this afternoon I said something about the a presentation and the field being taken offline. Will the track be available? And the when will the track be available? Or is that going to be offline as long as the field is? Um, the track will be available for the spring okay. season. The field, however, the stadium field, however, will not be. And, and I would like to also caution. It will be available as long as we are not risking the investment that we have made because we have known from past <coughs> trends that even when it's available, people have unfortunately gone in there and chose to do other activities such as snow blowing and everything <coughs> else. We will maintain control of that, that track as long as possible to ensure successful completion and good fiscal stewardship so that we don't have increased costs prior to really opening it. So we want to we want to be very careful about that uh, because once they see the track down, they'll see dirt, they'll see some grass. That doesn't mean that you can just go in there. So we'll try to have to keep control and we may have to look at new entrance gates so that yeah, items cool. like snow blowers can't easily be brought in there. Will the cameras be up by then? What, what were the cameras? Are there going to be cameras? Should be. Okay. It should be. Yes. Um, the athletic director and I have had meetings with um, coaches um, already, not all of them, um, as well as uh, impacted user groups to make sure everybody's aware of this. And this map really hasn't changed. And all of these dates are still, you know, estimated dates. We just don't want to get anybody's. <laughs> you have, you said we'd have it there. That's yeah. what we're hoping for, yes. <laughs> but yes. at the beginning time, is pretty sure you're going to start in June. I mean, well, again, uh, we, are, we are hoping uh, bids come in uh, competitive within budget, um, that we have no rebidding uh, because, um, because of the impacts that SED has had on us. We, we really don't have time um, on any of this stuff to rebid uh, because we are so tight with our, our, our summer schedule. But we have to be careful as a board 
with our recommendations too that if the bids come in high because multiples are bidding we also need to make the best financial decision that if we have to rebid we may have to rebid because our contractors have to know we're looking for the best possible service at the most reasonable cost and we do not want to signal that we're just going to accept anything because as a superintendent I'm not but but there wouldn't be any harm in getting the word out that potentially June all these facilities are closed so people aren't surprised you yeah know. That, I mean, that we're, had, we're talking that less been, than two weeks away potentially been, yeah. things are and really? I think it needs to I think SS and N notifiers need to go I mean yeah people the coaches and everybody might know but the community at large yeah. does not know the extent of the closure of the fields and a lot of people use them over the summer we can you know, work in a, and, I, I and think Marcy's over there stuff. we'll ask Marcy if she can help us out with some of her great editorial skills in her we've actually called uh, <laughs> through the high school main office we, we've called our typical user groups of the summertime yeah. um, they already know and we did this probably two two three months yeah. ago <laughs> so they're aware yeah. um, the last time we were briefed on this, um, I think it was sort of the beginning of, of our new athletic director's um, tenure here, and I think um, he was kind of working diligently to kind of sort out the scheduling that this is going to set in motion. Any bumps along the way that we should know about related to the scheduling, or is that going well? Or? Uh, all of our fellow suburban schools as well as our local university have been very helpful. We've, I, I know Lens Diligence as well as some of our coaches have tried to work out best deals to maintain our programs as well as maintain some of the funding opportunities for boosters as well. Good. Okay. Um, critical items at the middle school that we want to accomplish this summer, pretty much the front facade. Um, we will get rid of the, uh, the black um, um, shawl over the front, um, that safety fabric. Um, uh, so all that masonry work will be done. Uh, probably the, the front will be closed off for the summertime. We'll have an alternate access. Um, there's a lot of roofing at the middle school. It's actually a reseaming project. We will go a lot, a lot quicker on that. Um, there's a number of bathrooms that we're renovating. We're only going to be taking one of them this summertime, uh, pretty much near the cafeteria um, and doing that. Um, and then as well, we have a couple additions, one being a small uh, room next to the pool, which will uh, store our chlorine and, and, and uh, some of the pool operations, and as well as this new enclosure out front that's going to um, uh, kind of combine the two uh, pit stairs or the stairways coming out of the pit. The, the summer program that uh, the enrichment program or whatnot yep. at the middle school will be still operating. Yep, and we've already dealt um, actually with uh, Jody and middle school staff as far as um, uh, impacts uh, to that. I mean, uh, we're still going to be able to accommodate um, those programs. Um, Slingerlands, um, again, tremendous roofing going on there, uh, a lot of masonry work up front. Um, uh, we're going to have abatement at all the elementary schools. We pretty much split it up where we, we can't do all the abatement all in one season. So every elementary school um, will do a part of it this year that allows us to move furniture out um, and, then, and then back in. So um, that's a common theme here, uh, as well as um, uh, upgrades to the security system, which is basically an enhanced uh, camera system, uh, door locking system at, at, each, at each, each entrance. Uh, Hammergirl, uh, another common theme at Hammergirl, Glenmont, and Ellesmere is the playground. Um, it's our goal to basically get all three new playgrounds in at all those schools um, and any, of course, associated drainage work um, with them. Uh, Hammergirl is having a lot of abatement as well, which we're, we are phasing, as well as security upgrades. And there's Glenmont, um, same thing, same concept there. Um, and again, this is not the whole bond by any means. Um, there's a number of other items that we will, we will, if we can, progress throughout the school time. If not, then we're looking at summer 2015 and pretty much be done by September um, um, 2015. Ellesmere, um, again, uh, Ellesmere has a little more work in some of the classrooms because we're um, bringing up to date the classroom toilet rooms uh, to ADA compliance. 
Eagle um, security uh, upgrades at least uh, this summertime. There's other um, site work and, and some other work going on there as part of the bond, but not till later on. Oh. Clarksville, uh, a portion of it needs to be uh, re-roofed. Uh, it's well outside of its life, um, so we will coordinate with the sheriffs on that. Um, that's not so much of a priority during the summertime because they're there 24-7 all year round, so it's probably more of a fall time project. Uh, the Ornum building, uh, we have um, roofing work going on uh, and a new equipment shed. And again, this is not a priority necessarily for summertime. That, that can happen uh, once school starts um, and, and well into the fall time. Um, let me just also say security as well um, is, is the camera systems at the exterior of O&M, at transportation, and inside and outside of the high school and the middle school. That as well is on the, um, the priority to uh, to progress during the summertime. Whether or not it'll be fully up and operational by the start of school, um, I mean, that's our goal. Uh, transportation, um, we want to at least get the new addition uh, that will um, house the paint bay um, underway. Um, there's no way it'll be done by summertime, but they will be able to advance that uh, throughout the fall time. Um, they have a lot of paving work as well um, uh, in the back if, if we are able to afford it. Uh, where buses park along the gravel area, we'd be at least looking to pave that area uh, this um, summertime and leave the full depth restoration of an area near the uh, existing base um, probably till next summer. And that's it. Um, I will also mention the energy performance contract. Uh, we are on our fourth draft of the final draft of the detailed energy assessment. Um, we have a meeting next week. Uh, I'm hoping uh, to be before the board possibly at the next meeting or, or whenever we can schedule to discuss what the final scope is uh, to get your approval. And that will probably be late June, early July. Okay. Questions? Do you have any questions? No. Thank I you, Greg. I, I mean, if I can, I want to commend Greg uh, as well as Ashley McGraw, Dan, and Scott uh, for construction. Uh, campus construction management group. Um, it, it's tireless hours that get you to this point, but we're coming to the conclusion of the planning phase. And as soon as the board accepts and we start to award contracts, we will start moving to the implementation phase. And, and as we said when we started this process, we are trying to make sure that we bring this in not only on budget or under budget and on time, but also effectively to make sure that we correct the items that we said we were going to address and correct. So I want to commend all of you for working together. There are always bumps and bruises during the way. I think we all feel them, but now it's move into the implementation. I'm sure both Ashley and campus will hold to the highest level of standards to make sure that the work is done to the expectation of Bethlehem Central and this board and this community. Uh, I wish you well. I'll be starting to participate in your uh, weekly management meetings at this point to make sure we drive that home as well as in the bids. A and the biggest thing is that we just want to thank you for making the time and commitment. And Greg, I know you work tremendously long hours to be able to pull this off with two projects not only going at once. That's why we wanted to give a little s separation between the two. So thank you all for everything that you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, next, the, at this time, the this time is set aside for visitors to address the Board of Education on any agenda items. If you would like to address the board, please come forward, uh, state your name. Anyone? My name is Avery, and I'm going to be talking about how you should not phase Chinese out. Which means in English, I love my Chinese class, but we are not alone. My students in my class, like Jillian up here, 
They also love Chinese class. And still, we are not alone. Over one billion people speak Chinese, making it the number one most spoken language. As you can see, this is not the language to face out. more kids interested in it, it would be a lot easier to maintain because uh, most kids think of Chinese as uh, words completely different from English and reading and writing characters and then falling behind, which is wrong because you don't start learning characters in Chinese and when you learn them it's not an overload and surprisingly not too hard. Us sixth graders can easily write numbers 1 through 99 in characters, and the numbers um, are easier, like if you're saying 43, you're basically saying 4103. And some of the words actually do sound a lot alike, like a lot of the countries, like Malaysia is Malaysia. Um, brands like McDonald's are easy, like Mai Dong Lao. Hamburger is Ham Ba Bao. And because how surprisingly easy it can be, on the second day of school, we came home saying a five sentence little story about a dog. And we do a lot of games that build comprehension. And if people, the incoming sixth graders knew that how fun it is and not terrible and how useful it is, I think more people would join and you'd have less of a problem on your hands with not enough people joining. Thank you very much for those comments. Ni hao, wo de ming zi shi Michael Potter. Um wo zi ge nian lian shi zhong wen ke and at the begin before I learned any of this Chinese, before I had to learn all this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful language, I was I had to, the school had me sign a contract regarding my commit my commitment and my passion to learning this language, and I signed it. And over these four years, I've learned a wealth of new words. I've learned things I've never even known about Chinese before. I've just learned so many things, and now coming to this meet, coming to this meeting about how Chinese could potentially be phased out, I'm. It. It would be, best. For, it would be great for these kids that have signed. The, what I'm saying is that. I had signed a I had signed a contract in the um, before six, in sixth grade to devote my com, to commit to Chinese to learn all the way through all the way up to intermediate and to, and to graduate proficient in the language. I have I'm upholding the commitment right now by choosing to take Chinese three and and hopefully intermediate Chinese in the coming years. It would be great, and, it and I would appreciate it if the board could continue and finish to hold out on their end of the bargain. Thank you. Yeah, you might have to raise I think that. it's going to have to go up a little. <laughs> My name is Hunter Webb. Um, I have a ninth grader uh, who has been in Chinese for four years now. Um, the Chinese program here um, is, is the crown jewel, uh, I believe, of Bethlehem's educational uh, commitment. 
I spoke with my daughter uh, just yesterday, uh, and I asked her about the type of children, or uh, they're not children anymore, they're, they're young adults, uh, children and young adults that are taking Chinese. In her class, 13 of the 15 children, kids in that class, are either on the honor roll or on the merit roll. And all but three of those kids are taking at least one honors class. What I'm trying to say, um, just recently in the U New Year US News and World Reports ranking came out, ranking our school, you know the exact number. 421 top 500 in the nation. In the nation, you know the exact number. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Part of the thing that's driving that ranking are the kids that are trying to go above and beyond. Those kids that are taking the, the honors classes, taking the AP classes, taking the extra challenges, and those are directly reflected on that rating because college preparation, which includes honors classes or includes AP classes, uh, is part of that rating. And those are the kids that are taking Chinese. These are the kids that want to achieve, that want to do something different, that wa don't want to just, you know, take, I took Spanish, right? Um, Spanish when I was, I, you know, not disparaging it, but it was seen as the easy way out. Chinese is seen as being a challenge, something different. And Other districts in the area look to this district as special because that, because that they have that Chinese program. Case in point, my daughter spoke to someone who is a native Chinese speaker um, at a class last week. And she spoke at length with my daughter, asking her questions in Chinese, conversing back and forth in Chinese. My daughter, or my, this woman said two things. First of all, she said, you are getting an excellent education. Your intonation is terrific. You understand the language. You are able to speak fluently in this language. The second thing she said is, where is this being taught? Because I would like to move my student here. So I understand that, you're, that you guys are trying to find a Chinese teacher. Um, that's the number one goal, to try to continue this program. And I commend you in that. And I would ask and suggest that you move heaven and earth to try to do that. Uh, because this is something that, that the schools in the area, this is a foundation of our, our top rating in this area, or in this, uh, of this school. And it is uh, something that will continue to help our students achieve, as well as to help them to to become what to get to have more opportunity in the future. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I would like to. I, I should have said something at the beginning too. We we do have a policy of a two-minute time limit. So sure. Thank you. No, you're saying that because yeah. I'm getting up. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Peter Potter. Uh, I've got two sons in the program. Uh, uh, Michael has been in for four years. Peter actually had to give it up uh, to go to lab school. It was uh, actually a very difficult decision uh, because we thought that that was uh, something that shouldn't have to be given up. Uh, three years ago, the board had a difficult decision. We had a very, very hard time with the idea of giving up Chinese. It's one of the reasons why Chinese has had such a struggle for the last three years. It was a continuing growing program up till that time. Every year since that, there has been the threat of Chinese going away. If you've seen world news tonight or you watch any news, China has surpassed the US in the global economy. It's what makes this school one of the best schools because we provide a program that no other school can, can ante up with. I hear the term bandied around uh, with regards to supply and demand. Part of the supply and demand problem, it's not the simplistic idea of there's no teachers out there. It's because we offer jobs that are part time. Nobody's going to move their family to a town like ours for a part-time job with no type of security, 
knowing that their job may not exist next year. I applaud the board for looking at first, and, and Dr. Douglas, looking first to try to find a full-time teacher for this program. And you know what, taking on the challenge. I heard some, some, some interesting comments as far as the middle schoolers and technology. I got news for you. They're better at it than you are. They're better at it than I am. They're not gonna have a problem with technology. Lab school uses the technology. All the students are using it. They're way past what we do. The teachers can't even keep up with it. Bethlehem uses the remotes in class. It's the technology of these remotes where students can feel safe about giving their answers. And I'm telling you, using this technology is not a negative. So when we sit there and say, geez, the middle schoolers are going to have a problem, I beg to differ. I think if you look at statistics, if you look at learning and how it's coming up, we have a very strong alternative to our full-time teacher. But I beg the board to look for full-time teacher. I beg the board to look for Chinese as a leadership program that shows our program. As Ms. Dr. Douglas had told us several times, three years running, number one school in the area. Chinese is part of that reason. And it's too bad to see that we have to fight to try to keep the funding, or in this case, there's no funding problem. There's the supply of a, of a teacher. But we've got another teacher's name. I know there's five. My business has about 239 different colleges and affiliate programs that we work with. There's 25 in this local area. I'm telling you, supply is not a problem for the teachers. And uh, I hope that you guys do everything that you possibly can to fund and to fill this program in Bethlehem and keep us number one. Thank you, Ms. Potter. My name is Monica Wilson Roach, and my son Avery spoke earlier quite eloquently, much better than I could have. Um, Mr. Potter actually stole a lot of my thunder. Bethlehem is an excellent school district. That's why we're here. Um, we love the school. We love the support that the school has given our children, both of our children, even though my sixth grader is the oldest. Um, I like the idea of the technology component. He is in sixth grade. He will be in seventh. He is so much better on computers than I ever imagined I could be. And at my age, that's saying something. We're kind of all in that same boat. These guys are scary with technology. Distance learning is not the same as just online. They will see a class. There will be a tutor, hopefully. And that is different than just looking at blocks of numbers, blocks of words. So please consider that look at some of the distance learning options before you make that decision. And I apologize for a shaky voice, but I'm very passionate. I'm a musician, we're all crazy, and we're all passionate. <laughs> so I'm imploring you to keep doing what you're doing. Looking for full-time employment is the best, of course, but I would not be opposed to the online option as a stopgap until we can get there. This is a great opportunity. If I can ask one question, just because I want to make sure we have clarity on that. When we're talking about middle school, we're talking about online learning, not distance learning. The reason being is there are very, virtually no distance learning opportunities out there at the middle level. And that's specifically what you were des describing is TV, either computer screen, and somebody's always there into the live interaction. That's very limited, and we want people to know that. The high school has a little more availability, but for the most part, what we we're talking about is online. Resources. Right, but you're still able to provide a non-New York State certified tutor in the class we that would, does speak We would speak try Mandarin. to provide that service. Yes, yes, and I think that would be sufficient. Yeah. I understand you cannot circumvent New York State certification. Believe me, I know that. Yeah. However, it may be worth tracking some candidates that are currently getting their New York State certification to see, gee, here's a pool of folks that may get it within the next six months or the next year, and using that online option as the stopgap until we have a broader pool. So it's something to think about. I love this school district, my kids do, and part of it is the outstanding educational opportunities and support that we've seen our children receive. So good job, but keep working at it. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Hi, I'm Peyton Roach. 
And I really like to do Chinese when I'm in sixth grade, and I would hate for Chinese to go away. And I feel that Chinese is a really fun language to learn, and I don't think that any language would be better than Chinese. Thank you very much for your comment. I hope to be the briefest. <laughs> um, tonight, I feel cautiously optimistic, whereas the meeting last week at the middle school and the prior board meeting, it felt like this was dead in the water. Um, so I applaud you for um, making the effort. And Kate, I love the quote that, you know, in three years, this is the first gun ho educational fight that you've seen. So go Chinese. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. Hi, I'm Amy Conway. I'm the parent of three children in the district, including my sixth grader, Katie Kirby, who's a Chinese student. I'm also an alumnus of this fine institution, class of 89, and I never would have imagined 25 years ago that I would have been here begging for more <coughs> education, but you know, here I am. In any event, we are encouraged by everything that we've heard here tonight, and on behalf of our daughter, we'd like to thank you for your efforts. We trust that the recruitment efforts on the part of the administration will be meaningful and not just lip service to these kids and we'll look forward to hearing from you by July 15th. Thank you. Thank you. No, oh, we're done. No. <laughs> I'm back. Hi, my name is Tina Mancuso and I totally understand what Jody and Dr. Douglas have been going up against as I started on this career path of finding a Chinese teacher since this has begun. Um, so I have sent you numerous emails and I want to report to the two of you today my latest find and I met with uh, Bob Haran this afternoon who is If a, we can please not say specifics oh, about Oh, anyway, personnel. the superintendent of Skodak School has a Chinese program with a full-time teacher and he is willing to do distance learning with us at both the middle school and high school level. So add it to your list. I, <laughs> I will be happy to reach out to Bob. Yeah. I don't know the details and uh, please remember as I we know, said it's before, the, de the devil's, the in, the devil's detail. in the details. Yeah. I, they always I tell everybody that, one thing and then they tell us a different thing. He told me to my face. <laughs> Bob's usually pretty straightforward yeah, with absolutely. me. Absolutely. Yeah. So he okay. said he'd contact you and it, it's a possibility. Thank you. thank you for your comments and thank you for your perseverance too because emails keep coming. I know where I'm going for an HR department. <laughs> We've always said that Ju Ju uh, Judy needs someone. You know? We do need someone. <laughs> <laughs> we just can't add it in the budget. No. <laughs> Any other comments from the public? Uh, oh, I think a gentleman in the back is coming up. My name's David Moore, and uh, I have a daughter who's in eighth grade who's been taking Chinese now for three years. And I'm here to support the continuation of the, of the program, hopefully in a uh, brick and mortar, live chalk and talk teacher full time. And uh, I realize in these times in New York State that it's difficult for school boards to, to finance these things, but I strongly urge you to find the money uh, to continue this program. And I do have a suggestion, and that is to instead of phasing out Chinese and forcing these students to pick up Spanish and try and catch up with Spanish, I would suggest that we uh, phase out French. Uh, I'm not sure why we're still teaching that Western European language when it's been on a, the downhill slide since Napoleon lost Waterloo. Um, I'm sure we've, we've phased out uh, German uh, years ago, I'm sure, and uh, I would just say that if you were to phase out French, you would get the enrollment in the Chinese, Chinese program. But it's because unless our students are trying to find a job in Haiti or Quebec or 
uh, on a shrimp boat in Louisiana. I'm not sure why we're, we're teaching them French to join the global economy. Thank you. Thank you. I would just say that there are many people who are passionate about the French language, and, and we'd have those same parents here or, or more. So we, we, uh, we do. There, try there's to... a demand there, and there's a supply of um, teachers too. I, I don't want to disparage any program that we offer. We would offer every language if we could. So. I would also add that I come from French Cajun stock, <laughs> and in French you learn in school will not help you figure out Cajun. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else from the public? <laughs> I think we see another gentleman coming up. My name is Mark Hennessy. Um, and as somebody who speaks French and German, I think they're great languages. Um, one of the reasons I'm here today is, is for that very reason. I was given an experience in high school where I was allowed to learn multiple languages which had a huge effect on my life. And it was terrific from the perspective that you learn so much about other cultures through languages. I think it's great that you invest in our kids. I think it's great that all of you have taken all the time to look at all these options. I have to agree with the idea that a classroom teacher is probably the best option. I see you nodding in agreement, which is wonderful. So I agree with what uh, Mr. Potter had said earlier. I think this is a really great opportunity. I think a lot of these parents are invested in the idea of Chinese. Um, and I think all of you are too. And it's really great to see that. So I appreciate everything that you've done. I would ask you to keep fighting for a full-time teacher. I think it's really important. And so, you know, in, in closing, thank you for all that you've done for our kids. And thank you for investing, not just in today, but in the future of our community. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? OK. All right. Move. I know it's the policy of the board to not engage with the audience, so I'm not. But <laughs> Then what are we doing? No. <laughs> given, given that some of the comments are taped and they will be seen by members of the community, I must say that in our passion, we are sometimes inadvertently offend other people by statements that could be misinterpreted. So for all those students who take French and Spanish, and for all the people who teach them, I do not presume that they are students who are somehow less passionate, less motivated, and less um, excellent in their efforts than any other student. Thank you. Thank you. OK, moving on. Uh, Next item is item number eight, finance. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following finance action items A through G. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number nine, professional personnel. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following instruction, instructional staff action items A through L. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 10, support personnel. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following support staff action items A through D. So, so That's a first. Second. Second. Hey, can I just and, say something? Yep. Um, both Gary Powers and Martin Malucci were, um, are, well, they are custodians at Slingerland School. Uh, where my children attended. They've obviously been there for a very long time and have always done an excellent job. And I just, especially Gary, with 42 years uh, of uh, service to the district, um, certainly both deserve a lot of recognition for doing that for such a long period of time. And so I really appreciate the work that they have done. That's very good. I was going to say the same thing. The combined total of the two of them years. is 70 years serving the district. district yeah. And, you know, we talk a lot about retirement and benefits without thinking of the person. Well, I'm sorry, a guy who's worked for this school for 42 years as a custodian well deserves those, ben those benefits that are coming his way in his well deserved retirement. Yeah. So I was thinking that when we read that. Thanks, Lynn, for bringing that up. But. Yeah, and, and, and 
these are people that would never um, seek any recognition. Uh, in fact, when we celebrate retirements, I'll be very shocked. We're trying to be their attendant. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. Because they tend not to. They yeah. work quietly in the shadows, but do a great job. I think we should do our meeting during the day. That way we can have them come over mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's to still give them the recognition difficult. they so deserve. <laughs> Very true. Any, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. Item number 11, correspondence for action. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following correspondence action item A. Second. That's a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? That carries. At this time, we would recognize visitors in the audience who would like to address the board on any non-agenda items. Okay. Moving on, future meetings are, um, do we have an, uh, yeah, uh, Tuesday, May 20th is the uh, district-wide vote on the budget, the bus proposition, uh, the three board seats, and also the library, and I believe there's a potential for one candidate on the uh, one seat up on the library board. Um, all those items will be on the uh, ballot, and it will be held here at the high school from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, at right after closing of those polls, uh, the results are tallied, and at the uh, public is invited to come into the high school and, and uh, watch that. Uh, the next day on May 21st is a regular Board of Education meeting. Uh, Tuesday, June 3rd, the Audit Committee will be meeting um, here at 5.30. Um, and then the next board meeting after that will be Wednesday, June 4th. Um, there is no need for us to go back into the executive <coughs> session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. That's the first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Uh, pig students, if you'd like to come up and sign out. Signatures. Oh my God, it's